So here we look at the various types of foreign currency risk. So there are like three types of risk. One is called as transaction risk, translation risk and economic risk. So from an exam point of view, these risks are very important. So we'll start from the transaction risk. So transaction risk is the risk of adverse exchange rate movement occurring in the normal course, in the course of normal international trading transactions. Okay. So assume that you are going to export something or you are going to import something. Usually when you are going to export or import, you lag in the payment or receiving of the amount. So in such cases, you will end up with the transaction risk. This arises when the prices of imports or export are fixed in foreign currency terms and there is a movement in the exchange rate between the date when the price is agreed and the date when the cash is paid or received in the settlement. Okay, So transaction risk occurs when the goods bought is in, it is in the other country's terms. For example, when you buy a good, if the good is going to be priced in rupee, then you don't have any forex or translation transaction risk. But if the same good is going to be priced in dollar, then you will be like ending up with a transaction risk. The great danger to profit margin is in the movement of exchange rates, the risk is faced by exporters who invoice in foreign currency and importers who pay in foreign currency. Okay, So it affects the exporters and importers only when the payment or income is to be made in a foreign currency. So we will have an example. Assume that ABC Co, it is an Indian company. It is selling a good to US and the promised payment is $1. And the today's day rate is $1 is 75 rupees. And XYZ Co in USA has received the goods and also makes a promise that they will pay in 3 months time. So XY Co in US has made the payment after three months time to the Indian company. So the Indian company has received one dollar. So now there are like two scenarios here. Okay. So scenario one is the Indian company has got the one dollar from the US company but now they go to the bank. When they go to the bank the rate is 60. The actual rate they thought for one dollar to 75 rupee that is what was fixed at the time of entering into the trade but now they have got the one dollar so the foreign us company has made its part very clear and they have paid the one dollar but when converting this one dollar to the bank the indian company gets only 60 rupees so now there's a problem here the company has effectively incurred a loss of 15 rupees because they thought they will get 75 but now they are getting only 60 rupees for a dollar so they are getting a loss of 15 rupees but it's not that they will incur a loss for example there can also be a scenario where the us company has made the payment of one dollar and when they go to the bank in three months time and uh, the one dollar becomes 90 rupees so the company can now effectively get 90 rupees so they thought they will get 75 rupees but now they are getting 90 rupees so that is an additional profit of 15 rupees so which scenario will work out, we will never know in reality. So, what happens is, and companies don't want to take this transaction risk. So, better what they do is, they try to go and do something called a hedging. Okay, they do something called a hedging mechanism. So, this is about the foreign currency risk transaction. So, this is about the transaction risk. So now we look at the translation risk. Translation risk is a risk that the organization will make losses when the accounting results of the of its foreign currency sub branches or subsidies are translated into the home currency. So we look at an example at translation risk. So an Indian company wants to invest in a foreign subsidiary and they have chosen UK as their destination. The Indian company is investing 13.5 crore. So what happens is 10 crore is for 
the real estate 2 crore is for the inventory and 1.5 crore is for the cash so when it is being like converted into the uk currency it becomes like 3 lakhs of real estate 2 lakhs of inventories and 1.5 lakhs of cash so totally it becomes 13 lakh 50 thousand of assets so after a one year period what happens is in 2003 31st march okay the value of the currency changes from 1 do, 1 pound to 100 rupees to 1 pound to 85 rupees so the value in pounds has not been changed if this value is the same as this value this values have not changed they are fixed but look at the translated value the translated value now changes so the value here which was 10 crore has become 8.5 crore the value here it was 2 crore it has become 1.7 crore the value here it was 1.5 crore that has become to 12.75 crore so put together the value of the company has fall down so what happens here is the value of the uk subsidiary is stable it is the same but the value in terms of translated value it has fallen okay it can fall or it can even rise it's not about falling it can also rise for example if one pound becomes 120 rupees the value will be higher okay the translated value will be higher but either way this is a currency risk so now we look at the theory for this translation risk is a risk that the organization will make exchange losses when the accounting results of its foreign branches or subsidiaries are translated into home currency so the translation risk occurs when the uk subsidiary value is being like converted into the indian value then only the value keeps going up or down translation losses can result for example from restating the book value of a foreign subsidiary's asset at the exchange rate on the financial statement position date okay so what happens is only when you convert it from one currency value to another currency value the loss or gain occurs the effect of translation risk is to create gains or losses in the reported financial results of the parent group but they do do not create but they do not create cash flow gains or losses okay so by the changes in the value of subsidiary there is no income or loss that has been gained because the uk subsidiary's value is the same only when it's converted into the indian currency value the loss occurs okay so you don't this is loss is only a notional loss it is only a namesake loss it is not a real loss so we'll move on to the next risk it is called as the economic risk so this refers to the effect of exchange rate movement on the international competitiveness of a company and refers to the effect on the present value of the longer term cash flows okay so what happens here is economic risk affects the competitiveness of a company and it also affects the longer term cash flow generating capacity of a company it is the risk that over a time the currency will depreciate or appreciate in value against other currencies so that a country's economy becomes more or less competitive okay so it is not about only your currency keeps moving up or down it is also your competitors currency which keeps moving up or down that affects your company so if you take okay so even though the dollar and rupee parity might be stable if the parity between the dollar and pound is going to change it's going to change to like this even this has an indirect effect on the rupee on the rupee okay so that is the problem we'll have an example for this assume that that's a u.s company and it buys shirts from india and bangladesh at one dollar so the rate today is one dollar is equal to 70 indian rupees and one dollar is equal to 70 bangladesh rupees so india what they do is for every shirt they sell okay as the parity is 70 their each cost 
Each shirt takes a cost of 60 rupees and they incur a profit. They incur a profit of 10 rupees per shirt. In the same way, the Bangladesh company also is like selling each shirt at one dollar. So they also get 70 rupees. So 70, the cost of manufacturing the shirt is 60 and their profit is, is 10. Now, there is a change in the scenario. At one year end, what happens is the Bangladesh rupees value changes, even though the Indian rupee value stays the same. The Bangladesh rupee value falls to 140 for every dollar. So now what would happen? See, still Bangladesh will still sell their shirts at the same one dollar. They will get 140 rupees. The cost of manufacturing each shirt is 60, and they will get a profit of they will get a profit of 80 rupees now. Whereas the Indian company got a profit of how much? The Indian company got only 10 rupees, but now the Bangladesh company got 80 rupees. How is it possible? It is possible because of the exchange rate. Okay. So the exchange rate is moving in favor of Bangladesh and against India. But the exchange rate of India is same 70 rupees only. So what would happen? See, Bangladesh, in order to effectively capture the market, what they will do is they will try to re reprice their shares to 0.5. So what would happen here is the situation and dynamics keep changing. So if they price at 0.5, India cannot price at 0.5. So India will always price at 1. With, at which rate US will buy? US will feel that this rate is much more favorable and they, and they will stop buying from the Indian company. So for the Bangladesh company, for every half a dollar they sell, into 140 rupees they will effectively get 70 rupees the cost of manufacturing 60 rupees and the profit per shirt and the profit per shirt will be 10 rupees okay but earlier itself they got a good profit why should they like sacrifice their profit it's because they can effectively shut down the competition from india so india cannot sell their shirts to us anymore so they cannot sell it to us anymore because their price is at one dollar which is very high and us companies will not buy at one dollar they will favor the bangladesh company so this is called as the economic risk so we'll have a question here there is a risk that the value of foreign currency denominated assets and liabilities will change when we prepare accounts to which risk does the above statement refer? It refers to translation risk. So we have another question. Tuco limits its operations to exports to foreign countries. Which one of the following statements about Yuko's exposure to exchange rate risk correct? So they are only like exporting their goods to foreign countries. They don't have any other uh, business. Yuko is subject to potential transaction economic translation risk. Translation risk will not come because they don't have any subsidiary. So as they don't have any subsidiary, translation risk will not come. So this option is wrong. Yuko is subject to potential transaction exposures. That is correct. They are exposed to transaction. Yuko is subject to economic and translation risk. Translation will again not come. So this is like up, which, this is wrong. Yuko is subject to transaction and translation exposures to exchange rate risk. So again, this will not come because translation refers to subsidiary. So this will not come. So it would be only option B. You can reach me at my website, wowacademics.com, or you can also see my Quora answers. I am active in LinkedIn and in Facebook page. So you can visit at these places. If you just type Sham Prasad and Wow Academics, you will get all these uh, links in Google search itself. And if you like this video, give a like, share to your friends. And if you feel that any points we have missed in this video, you can post it. We will try to uh, give an answer to you in the comment section itself. Or we will also create another video for you. So thank you for watching our video.